Welcome to the Pharma Voice Editor's Take video series, recorded live at the DIA 2014 Annual Meeting in San Diego, hosted by Taryn Grom, Editor of Pharma Voice. In this episode, Taryn meets with Dr. Joy Olberts, Senior Director, Cardiac Safety Services, Solarium, and Dr. Robert Lester, Chief Cardiologist and Global Medical Director, Cardiac Safety Services, Solarium. Dr. Olbert and Dr. Lester, welcome to the 50th anniversary of the DIA. Thanks for having us today, Taryn. Um, Dr. Olbert, there has been a lot of discussion regarding changes in ICH E14 guidelines and some sessions on this topic at DIA this year. What trends are you seeing in how sponsors evaluate cardiac sa safety and apply ICH E14? You know, at Solarion, we're really seeing a trend towards clients wanting to get a better idea of QT prolongation and proarrhythmic risk earlier in drug development. So the thorough QT trial, which is described in ICHG 14, um, is typically done shortly before phase three programs, but people really want to get a better idea of the QT risk prior to that point in development. So often what we're seeing now is that clients will want to add intense thorough QT-like ECG monitoring to early phase studies like single ascending and multi ascending dose studies, which allows them to get a, a glimpse of that QT prolongation risk. Um, what they'll do with the data is create a PKQT model, which allows them to see how QT may change as plasma concentrations change. And there's actually debate right now whether that could be used instead of the thorough QT trial to assess QT prolongation. Fantastic, thank you. Dr. Lester, what do you think is driving this debate to change requirements for a TQT study? The simple response is that thorough QT studies are very resource intensive and quite expensive to conduct. Drug companies are searching for ways to accelerate the timelines of drug development at lower cost while maintaining data quality and patient safety. As an example, one way that they're doing this is the shift away from using cardiologists who manually review, annotate, and interpret ECGs towards the use of highly automated and fully automated computer-assisted ECG interpretive programs. These programs, in turn, have been utilized in multiple early phase trials and have been successfully submitted and accepted by the FDA are in compliance with E14 guidance. In this regard, Solarian is well positioned to partner with the drug industry, being a leader in this process. We pioneered the first highly automated hybrid ECG core laboratory, in which our ECG core laboratory is fully embedded in our phase one clinic, thereby permitting more rapid completion of early phase clinical trials at a 40 to 50% reduction in cost without compromising data integrity. This initiative, along with other innovative processes, has enabled us to be a global leader in drug development and cardiac safety. Congratulations, that's wonderful. Thank you. Would you highlight some of the innovative strategies you are focusing on and how they may impact early drug development? You know, Solarian has a history of working with our clients to help develop solutions to the challenges they're seeing in drug development, which inherently come up. Um, so a good example of that is the highly automated ECG core lab that Dr. Lester referred to. So not only have we developed the core lab, but it's situated right within our clinic, so combined with our clinical services, which gives us unparalleled flexibility when we're looking at conducting these SAD and MAD studies that are now having so much intense ECG data collection. One of the challenges with those studies is that they inherently change. They're very dynamic. We learn with every subject that we dose. So it's great to have the core lab staff directly on site so that they can help manage those changes, whether that's changes in dosing times, changes in dosing dates, or helping with adverse events. It makes a phenomenal difference in our ability to deliver on those studies. So, but of course we continue to innovate. So some other examples of uh, where we feel the industry is going in the, in the next steps, in the next few years, is to look at other ways to evaluate overall cardiovascular risk beyond just QT prolongation, which has been a, uh, been a strict focus for quite some time now. 
Um, so for example, we're looking at developing algorithms for ECG data output that will help us uh, again, better utilize the data that we're already collecting on the ECGs. So, for example, looking at PR and QRS complexes to get a better idea of how the drugs are affecting sodium and calcium ion channels. Um, so, again, expanding that, that focus a bit. Um, and Solarion, of course, has other tools and capabilities that we can also help clients with it when they have challenges evaluating cardiovascular risk or cardiovascular safety with their compounds. Um, this includes things such as impaired flow-mediated dilation, evaluating myocardial dysfunction, or vascular thrombogenicity, so, so a few of the other options available. Um, but ultimately at Solarion, we want to use all of these tools and capabilities to partner with our clients to help them get the critical information that they need earlier in drug development. Because truly then as an industry, that helps all of us to focus our resources, prioritize our resources, so that we're spending that energy on compounds that have a better benefit to risk profile. I want to thank you both for sharing these terrific insights with us and joining us for our Editor's Take video program. Thank you for having us. Thank you for the opportunity to be here and interact with you. Thank you. Additional editors take videos, as well as podcasts, white papers, webinars, and more are available at www.pharmavoice.com.